Hello, my name is India Fisher and you're watching Dr. Freedom. Hello folks, Dr. Freedom here, Times from Dr. News, news from in and around the universe that may or may not make you go, oh please, can I have some more Dr. Freedom? Yeah. Okay, Um. yeah, a lot of weirdness going around the community, a lot of strangeness going around the community, a lot of vibes I can't believe. And it's amazing to me, you know, how many people suddenly have hopped on the I don't like it train. It's just, you know, trying to think that, you know, there is actually a majority out there who don't like the current series that we just had. And the thing is, it was not that bad. Like I said, I keep telling people, I've seen far worse. Like, oh, we're talking loving monsters. Try sitting through Nightmare of Eden. You know, I still love watching that when I ran on them, but still. It had a lot of strong points in it, but oh my God, the mandrels. All right, but what, like I said, the, just you know, different people like different things. But like I said, from the polls I've been seeing on my own page, the most hated episode was Saranga Conundrum. And it was like, you know, there was still the majority was vastly on the liked it side. And it freaked me out because I thought that was the episode that's going to really, you know, turn it around. But, oh, well. but if you've been hearing a lot of strange things out there in the community, let's start off with this. I want you, like I said, trust me on this. Watch this video to the end. Don't just shut it off in the first couple minutes or you're going to miss one of the most brilliant videos I have ever seen that outlies the current trend on YouTube like a mother. It really does. Hang on. Let's get, let's get this over there. Let's hop on over there. Now, me and Trilby have been on, you know, we've butted heads a few times over various things over the years. But he put this out the other day, and this has got to be the most brilliant video I've ever seen that really just takes the piss out of this whole thing. It really does. And I want you to watch it. Remember, everything you're going to see in here, I don't want to spoil it for you. But like I said, it's not what you think it is. Watch it all the way through. It's going to knock your socks off. All right, let's keep moving forward. Ah, wrong page. Okay. Now, here's some pics coming up. Now, from here on, I'm going to warn you, the spoiler is on. The spoiler alert is on. It's time to get them spoilers on. Yeah. Okay. Um, but basically, what's going on here, Like, it's just going to be some pictures, some cast names. There's nothing that goes in any particulars, but I know some people do not want to be spoiled completely or at all. So, yeah, I just want to warn you now. So, I don't hear any, oh, Dr. Phoebe, you put it in make it where go. Okay. So, Here's some pics that popped up on Twitter. Some interesting, weird, weird stuff going on here. What's the deal with the shovel? I don't know. The shoveler, the early years. Um, but interesting looking armor and such to say the least. Here's that character, you know, that we keep seeing. <laughs> so just a handful of pictures here, but more to come, all right? Next up, as I said, bam, here we go. Resolution, we got some new images released. If you want to go over here and preview them, you just click on the photo. It looks, ooh, ooh. It looks like she's holding a lightsaber, don't it? It's like, okay, there we go. Um, and we're assuming that this is Daniel, all right, this is Daniel Adebayega, who we believe is playing Ryan Sinclair's father. So, Some interesting stuff here and there, yada, yada, yada. Bam, here she is again, you know. Oop, she did it again. Okay, and here's a cover for it. So if you want to go take a look at these or maybe use them for wallpapers, yada, yada, boom, here you go over on Dr. News. Moving forward, Dr. Magazine number three, 533 includes a preview of the New Year's Day episode resolution. Now, so far, I have not seen a single picture of a single Dalek, but a lot of people are assuming they're in there. I do not know. Like I said, all right. Also in the issue, you got some other stuff right here. Bam, bam, bam. And it's on sale now, priced at £5.99. Here you go, baby. <laughs> Look at here. <laughs> so moving along forward. Uh, Series 11 soundtrack. This is a reminder. It will be on, on sale as of January 11th of you know, next year. Um, here is, the once again, the track list if you do not have it. 
So here you go, bam, 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 moving along. All right, soundtrack, of course, sorry, it's available for you on Amazon. All right, Ryan Sinclair and his father, and this goes a little bit more into it over here on Cult Box. And remember, they were trying to list this guy on his CV as playing a character named Isaac. They did the same thing with Sharon Clark. You know, instead of, you know, they had her listed as Mary instead of Grace. So, and there's a little, you know, a few things right here that provide you clues as you, know, you kind of knew he was going to show up. Moving forward, here is a free digital preview of Doctor Who Magazine. I will send all these links to you. It'll be in the description box as usual in case you want to go take a little freebie preview. All right. Resolution director calls the special a popcorn blockbuster, and that is Wayne Yep directing it. And you, you've probably seen his name across quite a few TV series here and there, such as like Preacher or whatnot. So he says, I hope that new fans will have a great time because it's such a popcorn blockbuster version of Doctor Who. Uh, Mandip Gill told TV Choice Magazine that, quote, there's a car chase and explosion. It's bigger than the other episodes. And Charlotte Ritchie and Nikesh play love interests. Sorry, Nikesh Patel play love interests. Lynn and Mitch in Resolution, according to Doctor Who Magazine. They find their worlds turned upside down by the arrival of the Doctor and her friends. And here's some more little nifty fair bits here and there. And remember, it will be airing on Tuesday, January 1st at 7 p.m. UK time on BBC One, 8 p.m. on BBC, in BBC America. And um, you know what I'm going to say. Okay. And this gives you a little, just a little more info, such as a cast list right here. Other than that, it's pretty much the same stuff, but they didn't include that in the last one. So here you go. If you want to hear some cast, you know, people in the cast crew names so like it. Bam. Here you go. Moving along. The story behind the rainbow scarf. All right, the inspiration for the rainbow scarf Jodie Whittaker wears in the New York in the New Year special came from the series makeup designer Claire Pritchard Jones and her husband, production designer Arwell Wynn Jones. Uh, Chris Chibnall explains in Doctor Magazine, "quote Claire bought Arwell a scarf for Christmas. He wore it around the production. Ray Holman, the costume designer, saw it and thought it would be perfect for Jodie's Doctor. Ray showed it to Jodie, who loved it, and he saved it for the special. So Chibnall also revealed in the magazine why the Doctor wears a colorful scarf. Quote." When we meet the gang at the beginning of the special, they've been off on their travels. Doctor's obviously picked up a scarf along the way. The doctor is never afraid to accessorize, be it bum bag or scarf. We all think it suits her, and it's always nice to see the doctor rocking a scarf, and the scarf is by designer Paul Smith. And here's his little tweety, tweety thing right there. And there you go, once again, a reminder what time it's on. So no, it's not a gay, weird, communist, pinko agenda. It's just simple. Okay, it looked good with the outfit. We like it. Bam. All right. Now, I keep getting tired when some of these articles say she's the first female Time Lord. She's the first female incarnation of the Doctor. But once again, we had a female Time Lord all, all the way back in the Key to Time series, which started with Mary Tam as the first incarnation of Romana. And of course, later on, played by Lala Ward. And then later on, the third incarnation a lot of people do not know about was played by Juliet Landau, and that was her big finish. So, I don't know. I'm leaving this one up to you. And I'll leave it, y'all, because like I said, this is mainly like an opinion piece with a little bit of a review in it. Um, such as this one, Too Touchy Feely, the, our panel on Jody Whitaker's first series is The Doctor. Um, and our expert panel of Whovians give their opinions on whether it was a hit or miss. So this is their opinions, you know, what they've you know, said about it. And once again, I leave it up to you to go read it for thine self. Moving forward, season 11 reviews, standalone episodes, failed the 13th Doctor, and it's by Liz Shannon Miller. And in her opinion, she feels that this approach did not quite hit the mark. And I'm thinking that's one of the reasons why we've had so much, you know, divisiveness in our own crew on the Omega Files is because you got so you spoiled to having some, you know, that over, you know, over character arc that went over the series and it's now gone. And so it's like, yeah, you know, everybody's like, this was not a proper finale. It was a standalone episode. And I think the proper finale is going to probably be New Year's, but like I said, we'll have to see. So there you go. Bam, 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 moving along. And lastly for today, revisiting Russell T. Davis Christmas specials with Doctor Who's festive episode moving to New Year's Day. We look back at the show's previous Christmas specials. So, and this is by Mark Harrison. Um, 
like I said, once again, opinion piece is his take on it. And he talks about, you know, the previous ones along the way. Here you go. So once again, a lot of weirdness in the community, a lot of strangeness in the community. You know, even on my own panel, suddenly I've got people go, oh, it was all crap. And I'm like, and it's beginning to make me wonder, should I even bother to do a series 11 re you know, review show? Because I have an eerie feeling I know what it'll turn out to be. And now I'm going to sit here and have to decide between now and probably mid January when I actually, you know, when we do actually do it, because yeah, I don't know what to say. It's just weirdness, 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 and not in a good way. Also, like from what I'm hearing, um, there's word going around that yeah, filming has now been pushed back to mid February. Originally they were ramping up to start in sometime in January. Now the word is mid February, which is, why the hell are they pushing it back? Why it's like, ain't it bad enough that you're not going to be around the next year? And as I've speculated before, I'm beginning to wonder if the row they heard that somebody heard that wound up in Starburst News where they thought Joe Chibnall was leaving and you know, he was obviously pissed off. Whitaker never said she was leaving. It was just assumed that if Chibnall leaves, she would then follow suit. She's never said that. And it was finally, by bleeding cool, they broke it that, yes, that Chibnall did you know, say this and all that he was tired of the bullshit, but it was all resolved months before the Starburst article came out. And now I have to wonder if that was the meeting where they sat down with Chibs and say, sorry, we're pushing Doctor Who back to 2020 and we're going to put your production schedule back. Now, someone in the comment box tried to say that Doctor Who's not the only show that has these little excursions and gap years. And I'm like, if you're talking about Sherlock, the only reason Sherlock had gap years or excursions and stuff like that was because of the availability of Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. Therefore, it was kind of a voluntary basis thing because they were off to do movies. Um, Doctor Who, like I said, has been treated like a redheaded stepchild ever since that stupid ass idea that back in series six, let's start doing this, you know, freaking split season thing. Then, of course, when Series 7 came around, they took the first five episodes, aired them that year, and then ramped the other ones back into 2013 just to make it look like they had something to air other than their miserable eighth year anniversary special called Air of the Zygons. Okay, so that's all that was about. That's the only reason they did. And I still can't believe they dragged the ponds back for five episodes for what? One of the stupidest companion departures I've ever seen called The Angels Rate Manhattan. Ugh, but that's me. Like I said, one of these days I just got to go back and do a review and explain why, you know, some of these episodes as I see them are the laziest goddamn writing I've ever witnessed. Yet people think they're brilliant as hell. Like I said, opinions differ on everything, folks. And remember, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got them. And sometimes we sound them off at the wrong times. Everyone have a great night. Take care. <laughs> have a good one.